Ferroelectric RAM is a random access memory similar in construction to DRAM but uses a ferroelectric layer instead of a dielectric layer to achieve non-volatility. Ferrum is one of a growing number of alternative non-volatile random access memory technologies that offer the same functionality as flash memory. Ferrum advantages over flash include lower power usage, faster write performance and a much greater maximum number of write arrays cycles. Disadvantages of Ferrum are much lower storage densities than flash devices, storage capacity limitations, and higher cost. History Ferroelectric RAM was proposed by MIT graduate student Dudley Allen Buck in his master's thesis. Ferroelectrics for Digital Information Storage and Switching, published in 1952. Development of Ferrum began in the late 1980s. Work was done in 1991 at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory on improving methods of readout, including a novel method of non-destructive readout using pulses of UV radiation. Much of the current Ferrum technology was developed by Ramtron, a fabulous semiconductor company. One major licensee is Fujitsu, who operates what is probably the largest semiconductor foundry production line with ferrum capability. Since 1999 they have been using this line to produce standalone ferrums, as well as specialized chips with embedded ferrums. Fujitsu produced devices for Ramtron until 2010. Since 2010 Ramtron's fabricators have been T and IBM. Since at least 2001 Texas Instruments has collaborated with Ramtron to develop ferrum test chips in a modified 130 nm process. In the fall of 2005, Ramtron reported that they were evaluating prototype samples of an 8 megabit ferrum manufactured using Texas Instruments ferrum process. Fujitsu and Seiko Epson were in 2005 collaborating in the development of a 180 nm ferrum process. In 2012 Ramtron was acquired by Cypress Semiconductor. Ferrum research projects have also been reported at Samsung, Matusta, Oki, Toshiba, Infineon, Hynix, Symmetrix, Cambridge University, University of Toronto, and the Inter-University Microelectronics Centre. Description Conventional DRAM consists of a grid of small capacitors and their associated wiring and signaling transistors. Each storage element, a cell, consists of one capacitor and one transistor, a so-called 1T1C device. DRAM cells scale directly with the size of the semiconductor fabrication process being used to make it. For instance, on the 90 nanometers process used by most memory providers to make DDR2 DRAM, the cell size is 0.22 square micrometers, which includes the capacitor, transistor, wiring, and some amount of blank space between the various parts. It appears 35% utilization is typical, leaving 65% of the space wasted. Data in a DRAM is stored as the presence or lack of an electrical charge in the capacitor, with the lack of charge in general representing zero. Writing is accomplished by activating the associated control transistor, draining the cell to writer zero, or sending current into it from a supply line if the new value should be one. Reading is similar in nature, the transistor is again activated, draining the charge to a sense amplifier. If a pulsar charge is noticed in the amplifier, the cell held a charge and thus reads 1, the lack of such a pulse indicates a 0. Note that this process is destructive once the cell has been read. If it did hold a 1, it must be recharged to that value again. Since a cell loses its charge after some time due to leak currents, it must be actively refreshed at intervals. The 1T1C storage cell design in Inferum is similar in construction to the storage cell in widely used DRAM in that both cell types include one capacitor and one access transistor. In a DRAM cell capacitor, a linear dielectric is used, whereas in Inferum cell capacitor the dielectric structure includes ferroelectric material, typically lead zirconate titanate. 
A ferroelectric material has a non-linear relationship between the applied electric field and the apparent stored charge. Specifically, the ferroelectric characteristic has the form of a hysteresis loop, which is very similar in shape to the hysteresis loop of ferromagnetic materials. The dielectric constant of a ferroelectric is typically much higher than that of a linear dielectric because of the effects of semi-permanent electric dipoles formed in the crystal structure of the ferroelectric material. When an external electric field is applied across a dielectric, the dipoles tend to align themselves with the field direction produced by small shifts in the positions of atoms and shifts in the distributions of electronic charge in the crystal structure. After the charge is removed, the dipoles retain the polarization state. Binary 0 S and 1 S are stored as one of two possible electric polarizations in each data storage cell. For example, in the figure of 1 is encoded using the negative remnant polarization PR, and a 0 is encoded using the positive remnant polarization plus PR. In terms of operation, ferrum is similar to DRAM. Writing is accomplished by applying a field across the ferroelectric layer by charging the plates on either side of it, forcing the atoms inside into the up or down orientation, thereby storing a 1 or 0 reading, however, is somewhat different than in DRAM. The transistor forces the cell into a particular state, say, 0. If the cell already held a 0, nothing will happen in the output lines. If the cell held a 1, the reorientation of the atoms in the film will cause a brief pulse of current in the output as they push electrons out of the metal on the down side. The presence of this pulse means the cell held a 1. Since this process overwrites the cell, reading ferrum is a destructive process and requires the cell to be rewritten if it was changed. In general, the operation of ferrum is similar to ferrite core memory, one of the primary forms of computer memory in the 1960s. In comparison, ferrum requires far less power to flip the state of the polarity, and is so much faster. Comparison with other memory types Density The main determinant of a memory system's cost is the density of the components used to make it up. Smaller components, and fewer of them, means that more cells can be packed onto a single chip, which in turn means more can be produced at once from a single silicon wafer. This improves yield, which is directly related to cost. The lower limit to this scaling process is an important point of comparison. In general, the technology that scales to the smallest cell size will end up being the least expensive per bit. In terms of construction, ferrum and DRAM are similar, and can in general be built on similar lines at similar sizes. In both cases, the lower limit seems to be defined by the amount of charge needed to trigger the sense amplifiers. For DRAM, this appears to be a problem at around 55 nanometers, at which point the charge stored in the capacitor is too small to be detected. It is not clear as to whether ferrum can scale to the same size, as the charge density of the PZT layer may not be the same as the metal plates in a normal capacitor. An additional limitation on size is that materials tend to stop being ferroelectric when they are too small. There is ongoing research on addressing the problem of stabilizing ferroelectric materials. One approach, for example, uses molecular adsorbates. To date, the commercial ferrum devices have been produced at 350 nanometers and 130 nanometers. Early models required two ferrum cells per bit, leading to very low densities, but this limitation has since been removed. Power consumption The key advantage to ferrum over DRAM is what happens between the read and write cycles. In DRAM, the charge deposited on the metal plates leaks across the insulating layer and the control transistor, and disappears. In order for a DRAM to store data for anything other than a very short time, every cell must be periodically read and then rewritten, a process known as refresh. Each cell must be refreshed many times every second and this requires a continuous supply of power. In contrast, ferrum only requires power when actually reading or writing a cell. 
The vast majority of power used and RAM is used for refresh, so it seems reasonable to suggest that the benchmark quoted by TTRMRAM researchers is useful here too, indicating power usage about 99% lower than DRAM. The destructive red aspect of ferrum may put it at a disadvantage compared to MRAM. However, another non-volatile memory type is flash RAM, and like ferrum it does not require a refreshed process. Flash works by pushing electrons across a high-quality insulating barrier where they get stuck on one terminal of a transistor. This process requires high voltages, which are built up in a charge pump over time. This means that ferrum could be expected to be lower power than flash, at least for writing, as the write power in ferrum is only marginally higher than reading. For a mostly read device the difference might be slight. But for devices with more balanced read and write the difference could be expected to be much higher. Performance drum performance is limited by the rate at which the charge stored in the cells can be drained or stored. In general, this ends up being defined by the capability of the control transistors, the capacitance of the lines carrying power to the cells, and the heat that power generates. Ferrum is based on the physical movement of atoms in response to an external field, which happens to be extremely fast, settling in about one nanosecond. In theory, this means that ferrum could be much faster than DRAM. However, since power has to flow into the cell for reading and writing, the electrical and switching delays would likely be similar to DRAM overall. It does seem reasonable to suggest that ferrum would require less charge than DRAM, because DRAMs need to hold the charge, whereas ferrum would have been written to before the charge would have drained. However, there is a delay in writing because the charge has to flow through the control transistor, which limits current somewhat. In comparison to flash, the advantages are much more obvious, whereas the read operation is likely to be similar in performance. The charge pump used for writing requires a considerable time to build up current, a process that ferrum does not need. Flash memories commonly need a millisecond or more to complete a write, whereas current ferrums may complete a write in less than 150 nanoseconds. On the other hand, ferrum has its own reliability issues, including imprint and fatigue. Imprint is the preferential polarization state from previous writes to that state, and fatigue is increase of minimum writing voltage due to loss of polarization after extensive cycling. The theoretical performance of ferrum is not entirely clear. Existing 350 nanometers devices have read times on the order of 50 to 60 nanoseconds, although slow compared to modern drums, which can be found with times on the order of 2 nanoseconds. Common 350 nanometers drums operated with a read time of about 35 nanoseconds, so ferrum performance appears to be comparable given the same fabrication technology. Overall, ferrum remains a relatively small part of the overall semiconductor market. In 2005, worldwide semiconductor sales were US$235 billion, with the flash memory market accounting for US$18.6 billion. The 2005 annual sales of Ramtron, perhaps the largest ferrum vendor, were reported to be US$32.7 million. The much larger sales of flash memory compared to the alternative NVRAM's support of much larger research and development effort. Flash memory is produced using semiconductor line widths of 30 nanometers at Samsung while ferrums are produced in line widths of 350 nanometers at Fujitsu and 130 nanometers at Texas Instruments. Flash memory cells can store multiple bits per cell, and the number of bits per flash cell is projected to increase to 4 or even to 8 as a result of innovations in flash cell design. As a consequence, the aerial bit densities of flash memory are much higher than those of ferrum, and thus the cost per bit of flash memory is orders of magnitude lower than that of ferrum. The density of ferrum arrays might be increased by improvements in ferrum foundry process technology and cell structures. 
such as the development of vertical capacitor structures to reduce the area of the cell footprint. However, reducing the cell size may cause the data signal to become too weak to be detectable. In 2005, Ramtron reported significant sales of its Ferrum products in a variety of sectors including electricity meters, automotive, business machines, instrumentation, medical equipment, industrial microcontrollers, and radio frequency identification tags. The other emerging NVRAMs, such as MRAM, may seek to enter similar niche markets in competition with Ferrum. Texas Instruments proved it to be possible to embed Ferrum cells using two additional masking steps during conventional CMO semiconductor manufacture. Flash typically requires nine masks. This makes it possible for example, the integration of ferrum on microcontrollers, where a simplified process would reduce costs. However, the materials used to make ferrums are not commonly used in CMOS integrated circuit manufacturing. Both the PZT ferroelectric layer and the noble metals used for electrodes raise CMOS process compatibility and contamination issues. Texas Instruments has incorporated an amount of RAM memory into its MSP430 microcontrollers in its new FRAM series.